everyone, my name is Loco and welcome to another video. Now today, we're gonna be talking about the component selection um, that I made for actually building my new video editing machine. Now this is going to be the very first video in a three-part series, so make sure you also check out the description below, right below that like button, uh, because there will actually be links to the other parts of this series, uh, where I go over the building of the actual system as well of my room setup, um, and those videos will be right there, so make sure to check those out as well. In this part, we're gonna be talking only about the components that I have selected this for this build and basically the reasoning behind choosing certain parts. Now my goal for this whole system was to basically have an extremely strong video editing machine and also a machine that helps me out with live streaming. Um, as many of you will know, if you don't know, I make daily YouTube videos about video games um, and obviously making daily videos takes quite a whole lot of time out of your group, you know, out of your schedule pretty much to just render and edit the videos. Now, on my old system, I would generally be spending about an hour to two hours every single day just waiting for a video render to end. And that was sort of a big problem with me because, for example, if it would come home late in the afternoon, and it would, let's say, be like 4, and I would be done creating the video at like 5.30, I would not be able to actually live stream at 6, because the video was still rendering, I had to still update it or upload it and do the description, everything, you know, it, there wasn't enough time in the day. So, generally speaking, my new, or my new build basically focuses mostly on getting as little render time as possible, and also allowing me to live stream in 1080p with 60 frames a second. So that was basically the goal of my whole build. Now with that, I obviously had to select all kinds of parts for the PC, and this is something that I probably took a couple of weeks to maybe like two months or so for, um, just, you know, trying to decide what exactly I wanted to buy um, and what I really needed. Now, when buying a computer, there's really two ways you can do it. First off, you can actually set a budget um, and just say, all right, I'm gonna be spending a thousand euros or I'm gonna be spending 5,000 euros and I will just buy the very best that that money will buy. Um, instead, I didn't go with that. I basically just went with a certain budget in mind but mostly just went for value. So let's say, for example, um, choosing a processor, yes, I could get about 10 to 20% more performance, but no, it would cost about 300% uh, more in price. So I, I just mostly went with value, opposed to really having a certain budget in mind. Now with that, let's just go past all the actual components that I chose um, and go over the reasoning behind them. Now first off, the actual meat of the installation, this is going to be the processor that will basically help me achieve the whole live streaming thing that I just discussed, as well as the video editing and everything else. This is going to be the 5820K, which is a new x99 chipset processor by Intel. Um, and this is a 6-core, 12-thread processor that is very easily to overclock. Now, currently I have it overclocked at 3.8 gigahertz, um, but I probably could push it a whole lot higher, but this is the meat of the system. Now, I could have gone for a 5930K, but I found out that the performance is pretty much similar to this one, except for the fact that the 5930K is better when you run like 3 or 4 graphics cards, which I personally will never do. Um, and I couldn't justify the cost of a 5690X, which is the high-end end system, because, well, well, it costs about three times as much as this one and basically it will give me maybe 10 to 20 percent extra performance and honestly in the applications that I use mostly games and whatnot I will get more value out of the 5820k so this is the processor that I went with um, and it, it has been running very very smoothly ever since it does allow me to render very quickly and it also allows me um, to, you know, do the live streaming in 1080p with 60 frames a second uh, while maybe using about 50% of its processing power, which is great. Now with the X99 chipset, you also need to be running DDR4 memory, which came out very recently. Now I can't actually show you the RAM, this is the packaging of the RAM. Uh, I can't actually show you the RAM because it's built in the system. Uh, but basically I went with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3000 megahertz memory, uh, which I found actually a pretty good deal on. Honestly though, I wish I could have gone for 32 gigabytes because once again, it helps me out with uh, video rendering and everything a whole lot more. Uh, but I couldn't really justify the cost right now. DDR4 memory just recently came out um, and the price is kind of ridiculous. So maybe at some point I will add on 16 more gigabytes if I find it necessary. Uh, but for now I'm going to be running 16 gigabytes of RAM uh, with 3000 megahertz from G-Skill. Uh, this is called the G-Skill Rip Jaws 4 third, no, 3000 megahertz, 16 gigabytes DDR4 memory. Something like that. Google it, you'll find it. 
Next up, the graphics card. Now, I can't actually show you the packaging for that either because it's built in the system. Well, not the packaging, but the actual thing is built in the system. Um, this is R9-280X. Um, I was thinking about upgrading, however, I find that I don't really need to. It will help me out with video rendering. Uh, but I bought this graphics card earlier this year, and I just took it from my old build, plugged it in the new system. Um, I will most likely upgrade this one as soon as a new series comes out from AMD. Um, or I might even go for like an NVIDIA card if I really want to, but for now I'm actually very happy with the 280X. Um, and that is one of the components that I actually took out of my old system and put in a new one. Next up we have the motherboard. I went with the MSI X99 SLI Plus motherboard. And this is basically their cheapest one in the X99 series. Now don't get me wrong. Um, the X99 motherboards are not very cheap. <laughs> I believe this one still was about 200 euros, which would be like 300 dollars for a motherboard, uh, which is more than I ever personally spent on a motherboard before. Um, and it has everything that I need. Now, last but not least, it also has this very sleek um, black look, which I really, really liked. I really liked the aesthetics of the of the board as well. Um, it has a lot of SATA um, ports that I can use to hook up more hard drives and SSDs if I really want to. And this board basically gave me everything that I need. It has DDR4, it has the X99 chipset, and it will run perfectly smooth. It also has this nice, nice little feature actually that allows you to overclock uh, very easily, which most motherboards have nowadays, but I quite liked it. Um, and I saw in the reviews that this motherboard especially had some really, really good performance um, compared to other of the similarly priced motherboards, so I went with the MSI one. Next up, the power supply. Now, the worst thing, in my opinion, you can do when buying a system that is going to be, you know, your workstation and you're actually going to be spending some money on it, the worst thing you can do is buy a cheap power supply. I bought an 850 watt one. Now, I gotta be honest, I probably could have gotten away with, like, 550, maybe 650, or maybe, you know, something like that, but I felt like, you know, spending a little bit more money on one of the highest quality power supplies you can find is definitely worth it. They're not even super expensive to begin with, and if I ever want to, like, expand it to a second graphics card, um, I will have the option to do so. Now, this is the EVGA Supernova 850W G2, um, and I honestly was very, very surprised with the way this thing came, uh, came in. Um, it even has this, like, little packaging pouch right here that I'm, like... I don't know, I think I can carry my power supply around or something, I don't know exactly, but this thing was built very, very well, and once again, as far as aesthetics go, um, it came with all these sleek black cables, um, which just make the system look a whole lot more tidy, instead of like the, the red cables and like the ugly endings, you can see like the, the ends of these cables are all full in black, which suit obviously very, very well. Uh, with the motherboard and you know the case that you will see very shortly to cool the actual CPU I wouldn't be using a box cooler if I were you because if you're gonna be spending some money on a CPU It's not worth using the box cooler. However, I went with the H110 now Originally, I was planning to go with the H100i which apparently is able to uh, or it's a bit easier to actually build into the system um, And it actually has a little bit of a smaller fan. However, the webshop where I ordered everything didn't have um, the H100i, and I could either wait three weeks, or I could get the H110, and I was like, well, <laughs> I'm just gonna go with the H110. And I've installed this thing, and it's running perfectly. This is an all-in-one uh, water cooler, which basically means that, basically, you plug this little device right here, it's like the pump, you plug that straight onto the CPU, um, and then the actual pipe right there dissipate the heat to the radiator and through the fans it, it gets rid of all the heat. Um, and honestly, I probably could have gone with a different setup right here. I could have gone for an air cooler, I could have gone with a Noctua cooler. Um, however, that would have been a bit cheaper and it would have been, it would have probably performed slightly better as well. However, the problem is that I didn't really feel like doing it because I am probably going to have to ship uh, this computer across the country at some point as I'm probably moving country next year. Um, and I don't really feel comfortable First of all, to have a huge ass CPU cooler sitting there straight on my CPU um, and my motherboard and, you know, potentially it breaking off. But also, probably more importantly, I felt really uncomfortable buying a really nice system and then having ugly ass Noctua coolers on there. And I know there is like uh, a couple of dark pro uh, cards that are apparently very, very good for what they do. Um, or, uh, you know, dark pro CPU coolers that are very good for what they do. But I like the sleek, clean look of the CPU cooler, and I went with the H110 um, because of that fact. As far as storage goes, I also decided to actually go with an optimal setup for video editing. So for my very first hard drive, I took a 512GB SSD 
um, an NRX 100 from Crucial that I use for my main OS as well as all the software and games that I play. So basically all my main programs and everything that is important to me is put on that very first SSD. Um, and honestly, 512 gigabytes is actually quite affordable right now. I was actually expecting them to be extremely expensive, but SSDs have been dropping in price crazy. Um, so I basically got my SSD right now, this big one, uh, for the same price that I bought my very first SSD a couple of years back, which was only 100 gigabytes. Um, now that one is also in the system right now. That is an M4 Crucial. Um, like I said, I bought that one a few years ago, and I'm using that one currently as a scratch disk, um, as well as like small, tiny little storage for project if I really need to. Uh, but basically what it means is that that disk is being used right now for the video editing software to save like temporary tiny files. Um, that it can get rid of later again and you can actually, you know, just, just make sure that everything is running smoothly and with some extra performance on there. As far as actual storage goes, I got two hard drives. The very first one is for vintage projects, which is a one terabyte Samsung hard drive um, that I bought years ago. And I think that one is actually the oldest component out of the build right now. Uh, it's been running perfectly for like the last five years or so. Um, and, you know, that is just the one that is actually... If, once upon a time it was my main drive, then it became like a secondary one and now it's like the least important one, but I put all my finished projects on there, um, as well as I let the actual software that is video and editing and rendering and everything, I let it write to that one directly, so all the finished projects are going directly on that hard drive. And then as far as fraps files and all the recording footage and everything goes, I got a 4 terabyte Western Digital Black, um, you know, HDD that is running perfectly. Uh, only problem is... Mine actually wasn't running perfectly. I tried connecting it uh, on multiple ways. I tried connecting it to different SATA cables, different power connectors, and it just ended up not working. So I sent that bone back. Um, should be able to get a new one in the mail very, very shortly. Uh, but once I do, I will be using that one for my main storage and, you know, just, just my main device to actually dump stuff on. And the reason why it's 4 terabytes, well, if you actually record videos in fraps, um, the actual size of those videos seems to be absolutely enormous. Um, you know, a regular StarCraft video, just to give you a little bit of information about it, a, a regular StarCraft video uh, will probably be about 100 gigabytes uh, before actually rendering it to, you know, a smaller video size. Now, last but not least, we have the actual case that it's all built in. This is the NZXT H440. Is it NZ? Yeah, it is NZXT. I'm sorry, second, I always get confused with EVGA and NZXT. Um, this is the NZXT H440, um, and I took this one because it's quiet and it's pretty. That is mostly the main things. It doesn't cool as well as some of the other ones that I could have gone for. Um, however, I, I really like my system to be at least, you know, somewhat presentable. And with this all combined, I get a really nice looking system that is basically black and white in the main components. And then it also um, has a couple of red touches in there from the actual RAM, as well as like the, um, where is it? As well as like the, um, there we go, the AF140, which is a re the replacement uh, for the fan at the very back of the case. Other than that, that is pretty much it. If you have any questions about the build, make sure you let me know right below that like button in the comment section. I would love to answer any of your questions. Um, make sure that you try your very best selecting the best components whenever you buy a system. Um, and these seem to work pretty much perfectly for everything that I do. Keep in mind, I'm not just a gamer. I do a lot of video editing as well. And that was my primary focus because I know there's gonna be people in the comments like, oh my God, if you're gonna be gaming, you don't need that strong of a computer. No, I know, but I, I do a lot of video editing and like, you know, live streaming and stuff. Other than that, make sure you check the other two videos in this series as well. And I want to thank you guys all for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile and I'll see you in the next one.